Hey, welcome to Philosophy and Beam here today. In this video, I'm going to show you the process of how to bring in custom font to your Revit project uh, as well as Revit family. Okay. All right, let's go. Okay, so there are times where you're going to need to work with some custom font that is not quite in your system yet. So if you are designing a signage for your client, and if you want to come up with different design that require different font, chances are you're going to need some uh, special font other than your Arial, New Times New Roman, anything to, anything like that typical font to work with your Revit project. So uh, let's talk about this process in Revit because you're going to need to follow this number of steps in order to do just that. Okay, so first and foremost, um, if you're working for a client project, then chances are you might be provided with a font style uh, from the client because maybe that's the brand font that you have to go with. And uh, if you have that font ready to go, then that's the easy part. Uh, however, keep that in mind, the you have to make sure that the format of the font actually needs to work in Revit, okay? Uh, I've come across in the past where the font that you might be receiving from the client is only gonna be the open type font. Uh, that's the format. So in that case, Revit is not gonna be able to work with that font uh, format. So there are a couple options you can go with. Uh, of course, you can go back to the client and say, hey, I need the true type font because that's the font that you can only work with in your Revit project. Or you can go to other things like uh, there are online websites such as this one here I come across. It is an online tool, uh, it's free. You can simply convert your OT F file to TTF file, which is the open type font to true type font. Simply drop in your file, upload your you know your open type font, and then it will convert it to true type font for you. You can download and save it to you, you know, to your uh, C drive or to your computer. So that's the easy part. You can convert those files pretty easily. Of course, if you are doing your own design, if you if you don't have any font that you're gonna go with, then you can go through the uh, website. There are a number of there's just tons actually, tons of websites that actually can uh, can offer you these um, <clears throat> you know, fonts here. So this is the one that I've have used before. Um, it's actually they are free for the most part, and you can simply just browse and search the type of font that you want. And uh, so, like I said, let's just go through this process here. Uh, let's say okay, I like this one here, this free pixels font here which is definitely not the typical font that you have in your system so you can simply go through the process by downloading it and uh, you can see that this is free for personal and commercial use I'll go ahead and download that font and right there so it's going to download it as a zip file so let's go ahead and go through that process together and I'm going to find that font here so as you can see I have the zip file download here. Of course, first and foremost, you want to make sure that you need to unzip that file. Let's go ahead and extract that zip file here. So now you have these two type font <coughs> file that you downloaded. So all you need to do is to, in order to install it, you just simply double clicking that file. You do have the options to install it. For the most part, you can just hit install and then it should be good to go. It's going to take a second to install that. So it's pretty much done. Okay, so now that you have the font style installed on your computer, let's go back to Revit. So I'm using this model text family that I have made from last time. Uh, if you missed the video, I'll post a link um, in the description so you can watch it if you um, want to learn more about the tips and tricks of this model text in Revit family. Um, and you can learn more about it. Okay, but uh, for the demo, what I need to do is simply say, okay, I need to basically make a new font here. So let's say I'm gonna go ahead and do it in my floor plan view. I'll go ahead and um, use the preview here so that I only have one type. So I can go ahead and basically grab this one here. I'll go ahead and make copy it right there. So now my original one is the Arial font. So I can go ahead and go to edit type, start making a duplicate here. 
The one I've downloaded is called Free Pixel. Okay, so I'm just gonna name it just like that and hit OK. And from the drop down now, because I installed that font previously, so I can simply go down here. If I type free here, it should prompt me to this free pixel font style. Like I said, everything has been parameterized to this model text type. So like I said, I don't have to do anything as far as the text size or anything like that. I can go ahead and hit apply and okay. So you can see that it looks a little bit funky. That's okay, let's take a look here. Well, this one is gonna be fun to work with. Okay, so we, we're gonna go with that. All right, so what I need to do next is to make sure that I have a um, parameter associated with that. So I can basically go to the visible here and go to the associate family parameter. I'll go ahead and make a new font type. Okay, uh, in this case, under graphics. And I'll make it as a type parameter. I'll go ahead and rename that. I see the differences here. I'll go ahead and rename that in just a little bit. So now I'll go ahead and align this text simply like so and lock like that. Okay. And the last thing I need to do is to Go under here, I'll just have to change my parameter name to match the rest. Text free pixel. Hit OK. And of course, in this case, uh, yep, I'll go ahead and group it under. Okay. Actually, I know I'm, I'm kind of messed it up here. Okay, I'm going <laughs> to rename it again. I'll just call font here. Oops. There we go. Okay. So what I need to do next is to basically create a new family type here. So I'll go ahead and just make a new type. Call it free pixel again. All right. So I want to make sure that this type only shows up in this family type. So what that means is I need to uncheck this one here, hit apply, and I will go back to the previous two types, which is Arial, and uncheck this checkbox for the other two types. Otherwise, things are going to get messed up there. Okay. So let's go through the family type really quick. So under New Times in New Roman, I only have one checkbox check, which is that. Arial is the same thing. Same as free pixel. Okay, everything looks good now. All right, so I'm good to go. So let's go ahead and load it to my project there. As you can see, okay, things got a little bit messed up in my sample file here. And here's the reason. If I go to the family type there, this checkbox somehow because it was introduced in my family and still got checked here. So I kind of need to clean that up really quick from this one. But the other type should work just fine, as you can see. It's a little bit confusing, I know, but if you watch my previous video, you kind of understand the process better. So uh, please go ahead and go watch that if you haven't done it already. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we have now. So if I say, okay, now I want this one here. I can just go ahead and choose the free pixel like so. You can see that, yeah, the, you know, the P and uh, the B doesn't work fairly well. Uh, but you can see that now it's working. And so if I say uh, 2025, uh, let's do, let's do all, all lowercase this time. Happy New Year with the explanation mark. Yeah, so for the most part, it works. It's just that, you know, it doesn't do the void to the, you know, to your text style, um, which is kind of not what I expected. But again, it works for the most part. You can see that, yeah, it is supposed to be hollow for your, uh, for this font. So be aware of that issues uh, in, if this is the case. Okay, for the most part, it works. 
Okay, so uh, now let's talk about the same process if you have it in a project. So say if I want the custom font to be at your text node, the same process pretty much. You have to make sure that the font is installed to your computer. And if you go to text node here, uh, make sure that you create a new type. So go ahead and make a new type here. And uh, I can keep it 330 seconds if I wanted to, and I'll call it free pixel. And uh, of course, under the drop down here, go ahead and find that custom font like so. And you can hit apply and OK. And now you have a new font style that you created in your project. And I'll do it again. Be New Year 2025. I know it's uh, we are almost over for the first uh, of January here. Okay. All right. Anyway, so for the text font actually works quite well. You can see that all the uh, like a zero, it's got that little uh, diagonal line be inside there. Uh, yeah. So text actually works well, except the model text. Unfortunately, that's not working as well as I expect, but that's okay. All right, uh, keep that in mind. If you are doing a project together with the rest of your team, you gotta make sure that the same font style, so the same font type file needs to be shared across with your team so that when they are printing, if they are using the same font um, in the project, they will, the rapper will read the font because the font only comes from the local C drive, like I said. So that's why, again, if you're working with someone else on your project, you got to make sure that the files share among your team. Uh, so when, when they are actually printing or any uh, doing any modeling, the correct font will be picked up from the rabbit. Otherwise, you know, it's going to default to um, like, a, like a typical font that was in the system. Okay. That's basically it. Like I said, if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave it in the comment field. Um, if, like my video if you think this is going to be useful and uh, subscribe my channel if you haven't done already. Okay, that's it. That's the um, tip for the day. And uh, I'll, like I said, I'll have more video uh, in the fur near future about the um, Rafa family tips and tricks and some hacks perhaps. Okay. All right, stay tuned for my next uh, video. And uh, like I said, thank you for watching. See you next time.